Gary Arona here. Thanks for hanging out with me. Today I want to talk about why photography. And I know that that's a rather broad question. <laughs> but why photography? Why is photography an endeavor which captures folks to the point that they become almost obsessed? And I have a philosophy of photography, a theory. I've been shooting since I was about 11 years old. I was first professionally published when I was 19 years old. Now I'm going to date myself. That was 1983. And been shooting professionally since. Um, all fine art, mostly. I mean, I've made my, my living, my career in filmmaking and television and uh, photography. Uh, was not a commercial photographer ever. I'm a classically trained zone system photographer. And so I've spent a lot of time in the hills. Why photography? What's, what's, what's the deal with photography? What's so special about photography? What's the uh, psychology of what it does to us? But first, head over to the side there and subscribe and follow hit the hit the bell for notifications I'm, I'm gonna throw a whole bunch of this stuff up and start spilling my beans i've spent an entire lifetime multiple lifetimes it feels like on some pretty incredible photographic adventures and i'm going to really start spelling this these things all out and really delivering the goods as they say and telling the behind the scenes stories and and uh and so forth so do that the main website where you can find uh, prints that are available to you is savageterritory.com that's my official gallery now without further ado why photography i think that what ph photography does is very special and it's unlike uh, a lot of other forms of art first of all a photographic print doesn't require electricity to view. It's something you can actually hold in your hands. It's tangible, or you can, of course, frame it and put it on the wall. But it's something that you can, you can sit and ponder and uh, allow yourself to be immersed in, to contemplate in ways that you really don't get with video or television or, or other things. You know, obviously with painting and whatnot, you do as well. Photography is really interesting to me, and it becomes for some people, kind of a, an obsession. Now, we're at sort of a turning point. The digital world of photography that we're currently in is, is pretty amazing. But I think sometimes going back to the roots is good and understanding the analog, understanding the negative and understanding um, the transparencies and wet darkroom and the process. Because it seems to me that nowadays um, a lot of it's being lost because now we use our our, our phones, our little smartphones, and we click and then we move on and we click. We, we don't stay in one spot for very long. It's become this like swipe and look, swipe and look, shoot, move on, shoot, shoot, move on. How many can I get today? You know, that sort of a thing. What, you know, I saw this, I thought, saw Joe Schmo post this up at this location. Let's go to that location. That to me is not special. To me, something is being lost. And, I, and, and, and so now I'm going to kind of go backwards a little bit and explain why I think that some people get smitten by the Shutterbug. Let's call it the Shutterbug. Used to be a magazine out called Shutterbug, by the way. Very well titled. How do I say this without coming off like a jerk? I'm not being a jerk. I think a lot of younger folks are missing the point. And I'm going to, I'm going to draw some parallels here. Back in the day when we shot film, um, and let's say you were shooting 35 millimeter film and you had a long roll, so you had a 36 exposures. That's all you had. And, and you could only shoot as many images as film you had in your pocket or your case. And so I think you thought about it much more carefully. You thought about what you were photographing. You allowed yourself to be in the moment in ways that now aren't quite happening. And much like uh, a rock climber, I'm a rock climber, I'm a surfer, done a lot of these adrenaline sports. And what happens, let's use rock climbing. What happens is when you rock climb, 
you're forced to be in the moment in the now. And I know we hear this a lot in the now. And, and there's a reason for this. There's a reason that the ancient ones put so much emphasis on this. Because when a rock climber is climbing, you're completely focused. So you you can't worry about how your stock market portfolio is doing. You can't worry about all of these other distractions and crazy things that sort of proliferate as a cacophony of insanity in our minds all the time. You, you're forced to focus. What's my next move? Where's my next foot placement? You know, am I going to have to chimney up this crack? Whatever it is, you're, you don't want to fall. So you're forced to be in that moment. And that becomes addictive to a degree. And the reason is, is that it's, it's like the, it's like a pure form of meditation. You escape the mind numbing insanity that your brain puts you through most of your wake awake day. Right. And so you, it puts you in a zone, you know, when, when athletes talk about the zone, it's a hundred percent true. It's a zone. You're in a zone. And it, it's wonderful. It's such a, a, an enlightening, pure, magical moment to do that. And in photography, old school, it was the same. You know, you really had to concentrate and focus on what you were doing. What's my F stop? What's that going to do to my depth of field? What's my shutter speed? How's that going to affect my sharpness? You know, what's my, um, back in the day, it was ASA. Now it's ISO or ISO. Um, you know, am I shooting a fast film? Am I shooting a really slow film? Is it going to be really grainy because it's darker and I'm shooting an ASA 400? You know, whatever it is. You're, what's the focal length? How's that going to affect the compression? Are my mountains over there going to be pushed way back and barely visible because I'm using a really wide angle lens? Are they going to be pulled forward and look like they're right behind my subject because I've got a longer lens up? I mean, there's so much to consider. A lot of variables. And you really... And then you're looking at your composition and your color. What's the sun doing? What are the clouds doing? If you're lighting it yourself, what's my lighting setup? Is it working? Am I getting hit? Am I getting flares? Do I want flares? Do I not want flares? There's on and on and on and on, right? And so you're sort of forced into this really hyper-focused creative endeavor. And that's the key, is the creative endeavor. And, and I think that what's happening now is, is that our machines and in emerging AI are taking away that. So what we're doing now is, is we're essentially just hitting a button and letting it, letting the machine do the work, snap our quick shot. We're composing, snap our shot, snap our shot, snap, move on, next one. And I think that's unfortunate because we're losing our, our moments of, of peace. We're lo losing our moments of balance and solitude, reflection. I think we're losing the moments of being in the moment in a spirited way such that you are 100% alive. And that's unfortunate. Now, when Tabitha and I owned our place in Utah for many years, we spent more than 200 days a year in the wilderness. We would drive one of our Land Rovers out into the hills, park as far as we could, put our backpacks on, start marching, trek into the wilderness, hunting for really magical locations. The curiosity, the element of curiosity was incredible every, nearly every single day. And what it did in places of extreme solitude, there were a few years that went by that we, I want to say in an entire year, we might have seen four people. I mean, we never saw people, these places that we were going. Very quiet, very far off the beaten path, nowhere near a highway or a paved road. And so there was incredible solitude, which would magnify that effect and magnify that being in the moment, in the now. And photography is a magnificent... Uh, craft or art that allows you to really immerse yourself into the space because you have to learn how to see again. And that's ultra critical because most people have lost a sense of 
how to see. The problem is we're bombarded with so many images that it becomes a mush, a blending thing. So I get this all the time. I'll get some people that'll come back from a vacation and say, hey, I want to show you all my photos. They're really amazing. I got some incredible stuff just like you get. And then we'll start going through the photos and then they'll say, oh, that shot's got a power line in it. Like I didn't even notice that when I was shooting it. Or, oh, that's, there's a bunch of old rickety um, abandoned cars in the background. I, ah, gosh. I guess they really aren't like your photos, are they? And and here's why. Because our brain is collecting all of these images we've seen, we see every single day, and it's sort of storing them back in there. So if I drive up to a magical, really, really magical, incredible location, say, whatever, a bridge spanning a canyon, and what my mind does is it, it remembers, whether I know it or not, does it subconsciously, remembers all the images I've ever seen of a bridge over a canyon. And so it blends that information into what I'm seeing in front of me. And sometimes there'll be, you know, a giant power line or something really ugly right in the middle of the shot. And you don't even see it because you're sort of filtering it out relative to all these bridges that you've seen in photographs through the years. That's the way our brains work. We can't really trust them. It's like you have to retrain yourself to see. And that's another magnificent way of looking at photography and what it does is it forces you to be in that moment and teaches you to see, to be there. It's just like in Aldous Huxley's book, um, Island, you know, the birds are chirping attention, attention, attention here and now boys here and now. And there's a message there. And the message is, is be here, see what's really here now, not this cacophony of crud information in your brain. But now that's powerful medicine. That's really powerful medicine. And to me, that speaks to one form of the power of photography is that it has these uh, healing elements to it. It is a meditation. It is a spiritual experience if you allow it to be. Powerful medicine, ultra powerful medicine. And Every once in a while, you'll stumble into a location where the sun is just right and the clouds are just right, the time of day is just right, and everything's going off, and it's popping, and it looks incredible. And when when you're in the moment, you can see that it's working or that it's not really working. And that's how you learn to focus and see what's really in your shot in terms of composition. What's really in your shot? What's my focal point? What's the statement? What's the importance? Is it just to show off a big vista or is it to show off one special feature of that vista that is so unbelievably cool and unique? And this is what photography does. This is its power. So I'll ramble a little bit more about this in another video, but for now, just think about that for a second. The next time you're out in the hills or in the city, you're walking down the street or whatever, and you're snapping shots. Think about really being there. Think about what's really in front of you, what's really happening. Pay attention. Remember, attention, attention, attention. Here and now, boys. It's so strong when you start thinking that way. And do it every day, over and over. And eventually, it becomes second nature. And you'll you'll just know. And you'll walk onto a spot, and all of a sudden, it'll be boof an epiphany and you just know and that is a powerful moment and that's what I hope more folks get from photography so one aspect philosophy of photography I'm Gary Arona I really really appreciate you hanging into the end totally cool savageterritory.com we'll see you next time